I'll preach in a minute. Whenever God is getting ready to bless a church, he connects them to a prophet. Because that prophet can speak a word that will cause the very atmosphere to change. You go to 1st King, the 17th chapter, when you get home, the Bible declares, and Elijah the Tishbite, verse 1, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel lived, before who I stand, there should be no dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Chapter 1 to chapter 16, we see nothing about Elijah. Elijah, amazingly, just shows up from the backside of the desert, a bald-headed prophet shows up in the 17th chapter looking at folk telling him, listen, and, and, and not only does he come on the scene, but the first people God sent him to is a leader. And tell him, it ain't going to be no rain, but according to my word. Did you notice that Elijah said, he didn't say it ain't going to be no rain, but according to God's word. He said, but according to my word. Because when a man is a true prophet... God will back him up when he speaks to a certain situation. I was in Mobile, Alabama, in the United States. I was in Alabama. This woman comes to me and said, Prophet, by mistake, I left a child in the back seat of, 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 of my school bus at a daycare. The child, it was so hot that the child died. She said, I did not mean to do it. Prophet, I'm sorry. I didn't need to do it. I, I didn't mean to. I said, okay. I said to her, nothing leaves heaven before something leaves earth. When you release what's in your hand, God will release what's in his hand. Well, what is God's hand? This ain't God's hand. Psalm 8 declares, when I look at the world and consider all the works that thy hands have made. Hebrews 11.3 declares, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So God's hand is his word. When I release what's in this hand, God will release what's in this. You, did, you missed what I just said. When you release what's in your hand, God will start speaking on your behalf and causing things to change in your life. So she come to me. She said, I need a miracle. Because they finna send me to jail. I said, I know they are. You going to jail, baby. She said, I need a miracle. As a prophet, if I ain't nothing else, I know I'm a prophet. I know I am a P R O P H E T, not P R O F I T, P R O P H E T. As a prophet, I look at her and I say, Find me $500. Somebody look at me, they say, Why would you do that? I told somebody, I said, If your child, was getting ready to go to prison and the lawyer asked you for ten thousand dollars you would not question that lawyer you do whatever the lawyer told you to do and ain't no guarantee he ain't going to jail y'all might be quiet in here i said y'all might be quiet in here i said find me five hundred dollars she said at your word i'm gonna do it this is on Friday night. She go to court on Sunday. I got to be right. The woman brings me her seed, puts it in my hand on Friday night. And I said, in the Holy Ghost, we're right here. But in the spirit, I'm going to go to the courthouse before you get there. Because I was sitting up praying one day, Bishop. And we had somebody named Cleo who was coming on TV. And she was a psycho. And believe it or not, psychics have genuine gifts. They just operate by another spirit. 
I'm sitting up in prayer. Can I have a couple of more minutes? Are y'all ready for me to stop? I'm okay? All right. I'm sitting up in prayer one day, and I said, Lord, I'm jealous of Cleo, because um, Cleo say stuff and it come to pass. I say stuff and it come to pass. What's the difference between me and Cleo? Cleo getting a whole lot of money for hers, Lord. I'm out here with these church folk. They act like they don't want to give you nothing. I said, Lord, I'm jealous. I don't understand. Well, what's the difference between me and Cleo? Holy Ghost said to me just as clear as day, I mean, I, it was deep. When he said it to me, I shouted for about three hours. He said, son, the difference between a prophet and a psychic. Slap your neighbor. Say, what's the difference? What's the Hit the other person. Tell them, what's the difference? What's the difference? Now, when I tell you to slap your neighbor, I really be wanting you to slap her. <laughs> if you sit next to your enemy, that's a good time to get him. I, I owe you. <laughs> I said, Lord, what's the difference between a prophet and a psychic? The Holy Ghost said to me, he said, a psychic can see it, but a psychic can't change it. I said, what? He said, as a prophet, not only will I show it to you, but I'll give you the ability to go in the Holy Ghost and change what the devil had planned on their behalf. So as a prophet, I said, you place this seed in my hand in the Holy Ghost. I'm going to go to the courthouse because the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. And he can turn it whatsoever way he will. So I said in the Holy Ghost, I'm going to change this thing to work in your favor. Now, in the spirit, I'm bold. But when that anointing lifted, I said, Lord, did you really tell me to do that? Because um, if this lady go to jail, my revival is over. You understand? <laughs> yeah, I'm in trouble. Friday night, I pray for her. Now, remember, I'm not doing this because God said it. I'm doing it because I'm a prophet. And according to my word, he's going to honor me because I'm his man. Saturday, I usually go eat at a place in Alabama called Krispy Kreme Donuts. I, 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 I was so nervous that I didn't do no eating. I fasted all day Saturday. Turned my phone off, turned the TV off, got up under the bed. Because if that lady went to jail, her family was coming to get me, you understand? And she done gave her $500. Saturday, I don't go. Sunday they said you coming to preach no I'm not preaching this morning no I gotta wait today because the court case is on Monday at 9 o'clock you coming to preach Sunday morning no I can't preach the Lord want me to pray Sunday night no I'm praying Monday night we got a revival night Monday morning she has the case the word that I gave her was you're not going to jail all you're gonna have to do is one hour of community service now in America, one hour of community service is like crazy because they don't do that. You, you know, if one hour, by the time you get to the site, you're getting ready to clean up, your hour is up, you understand? <laughs> so th that's impossible. But I told her, you're going to get one hour of community service. Well, she, she's shouting and screaming that Friday night. Monday, she go to court, and I don't know what happened because I've been in my room praying, seeking God. Hoping that what I say come to pass. I get to church Monday night. I see a whole bunch of cars. I see people with all kind of stuff in their hand. I don't know if they come to praise God or if they come to beat me up. You understand? <laughs> so I'm still nervous. Say yes, Lord. <laughs> I get inside the church. The pastor ain't talking to me. Lord, have mercy. He ain't talking. I'm trying to figure, is he not talking because he overwhelmed? Or he not talking because he mad. I see all these people out here. And they shouting, they moving their arms like that. So I don't know if they riding, getting ready. I don't know what's going on. I walk in there, I see the lady who I prophesied to and told her she wasn't going to jail. I see her running around the church. She said, prophet, we've been waiting on you. I say, why? She said, the judge sentenced me to only one hour of community service.
Look at somebody. Say a psychic can see it, but a psychic can't change it. We had a football player in America. I don't mind saying it because he'll tell you. I had a football player in America who was fight. We had a football player in America who was fighting dogs. I'm sure y'all y'all see that. You know, he got all that money and he fighting dogs. Bless the Lord. But anyway, he over there fighting dogs. He come, his auntie comes in my meeting and I said to him, I said, you tell him to see me and he won't go to jail. Well, he got too busy. So I'm too busy. I can't come. You know, now, if I'm about to go to jail, if I'm about to go to jail, I don't care how busy I am, if somebody can help me not go to jail, I'm going to get unbusy. So I, I said, sir, uh, you need to come. I can't come, I'm busy. I told the auntie to tell him because he don't come. As a prophet, he going to get sentenced to two years. When they said him, his sentence was exactly 23 months, which is equivalent to what? Two years. Whenever God sends a prophet in your midst, it's either to bless you or to curse you. Remember this. The blessing only comes if you're obedient. Can I talk for a minute? Hebrews 4 and 12. The word of God is quick, powerful, sharper than any what? What does that mean? That means that the word of God has a double reference. The same word that can bless you if you obey it is the same word that can curse you if you disobey it. The same word that can lift you up if you obey it is the same word that can bring you down if you disobey it. Isaiah 119. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the what? Good of the land. Verse 20. But if you refuse and rebel, you'll be devoured by the sword. What sword is that? That sword is the word. The same word that could have blessed you had you obeyed it is the same word that will curse you if you disobey. Y'all might be quiet here. I'm in Fort Pierce, Florida. I walk up to a woman. I say, take all the money out your account except for $10. She said, God ain't told you that. You off. Oh, you got to admit, somebody come up to you and tell you to take all your money out. You look at them crazy too. I say, take all the money out. Every bit of it except for $10. And I said, in seven days, God going to make you a millionaire. You can't tell nobody in seven days they're going to be a million and the eighth day they broke. You can't do that kind of stuff. But remember, when I be saying stuff, I be as nervous as the people who I'm telling. <laughs> Bless the Lord. <laughs> it's Sunday night. She writes the check, finally. I said, I'm going to give you my number. Call me when you get your money. Instead of her calling me when she got it, she called me every night to let me know she didn't have it. <laughs> Monday night, she called me. I'll be done in a couple minutes. Monday night, she called me. I ain't got it. Tuesday night, how you doing, sister? I ain't got it. Wednesday night, bless the Lord. I ain't got it. Thursday night, how you? Still ain't got it. Friday night, I'm nervous. Because, you know, Friday night she called me and she still don't have it. Saturday she called me and said, you's a false prophet. I said, well, I guess I am. I don't know. She said, what to do? I said, I don't know. <laughs> I don't have a clue. I can't tell you. And I, I get on my knees and pray. I told the Lord, now the bank closed at about one o'clock. God, whatever you're going to do, you need to kind of hurry up and do it. <laughs> I done told this lady to give her money. Saturday, she goes to the bank at about 1030 to get her last $10 out. When she gets to the bank to get her last $10 out, hallelujah, she gets back a bank statement that tells her she has one million ten dollars in her account. She called me. She said, Prophet, what to do? I said, well, since you don't know, let me tell you. Get as much of it out as you can right now, because ain't no guarantee that's going to be there tomorrow. Somebody slap your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. 
The Lord told me to tell you, to tell you he's, getting ready he's getting ready to give the computers, give the computers amnesia. amnesia. What does that mean? That means that stuff that you're not supposed to be approved for, you're going to get it because the computer going to forget how messed up. I ain't got no praise in church up in here. Anybody that need a miracle, anybody that need God to turn it around, I dare you to jump up and shout glory. <laughs> Sit down. Two more minutes. All of that happened by the word of a prophet.